Welcome to a lesson on describing the behavior of the solutions of a second-order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, which means the differential equation fits this form here, where a, b, and c are constants. We now know we can solve this type of differential equation using a characteristic equation shown here, which is ar squared plus br plus c equals zero. And then based upon the solutions of the characteristic equation, we can determine the form of the general solutions to the given differential equation. And in this video, we're only concerned about describing the behavior of the solutions when the characteristic equation has complex solutions in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, which means the general solutions would be in this form here. For review, remember, if the characteristic equation had two distinct real roots, the general solution would be in this form, and if it had two real equal roots, the general solutions would be in this form. But again, for this video, we're only concerned about when the characteristic equation has complex solutions in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i. And we'll consider three cases. When alpha, the real part, is greater than zero, when alpha is less than zero, and when alpha equals zero. And we'll be describing these solutions using these three classifications, oscillating with an increasing amplitude, oscillating with a decreasing amplitude, or steady oscillation. So let's first look at this graphically. So here we're looking at the case when alpha equals zero, and notice how, looking at the graph, we have a steady oscillation because the amplitude remains constant. So if alpha equals zero, the behavior is always a steady oscillation. And hopefully that should make sense because if alpha equals zero, notice we'd have e raised to the power of zero, which equals one, and therefore the amplitude of sine and cosine remain constant, and therefore the graph of the general solution has a constant amplitude and a steady oscillation. Now let's consider when alpha is positive. So here's the graph of several cases when alpha is positive. So notice how as we move to the right, or as the input variable increases, the graph oscillates with an increasing amplitude. So again, when alpha is positive, the behavior is oscillating with an increasing amplitude. And again, hopefully this does make sense as well because if alpha is positive, notice how we have e raised to a positive power times the input variable, which means as the input variable increases, the amplitude on sine and cosine would also increase, and therefore the behavior of the general solution is oscillating with an increasing amplitude. And now see what happens when alpha is negative. So here are several cases when alpha is negative, and notice how as we move to the right, the graph does oscillate with a decreasing amplitude, which again is always the case when alpha is less than zero or negative. And again, this should make sense because if alpha is negative, notice how both terms contain e raised to a negative power times the input variable. So as the input variable increases, the exponent on e decreases, and the exponential term approaches zero, and therefore the amplitude on sine and cosine approaches zero, so the behavior of the general solution is oscillating with a decreasing amplitude. So to summarize one last time, if the characteristic equation has complex solutions and alpha the real part is positive, the behavior is oscillating with an increasing amplitude as pictured here. If alpha is negative or less than zero, the behavior is oscillating with a decreasing amplitude as shown here. And if alpha equals zero, the behavior is a steady oscillation. I hope you found this helpful.